Blunderbuss Chronicles, Part 1, Initial Shooting, William Hovey Smith, 2012. I'm Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. That's really cool. And I'm from the Mississippi Delta with a blunderbuss, would you believe? Yes. Everybody has heard of blunderbusses, but few people have seen one, fewer yet have actually handled one, and very few indeed have ever shot one. Well, we're going to do all of that stuff. Yeah, we are. Where these guns originated was probably in North Africa. And what happened, that these are muzzle-loading guns, and these guys fought on camelback. Yeah. So they were bouncing up and down on their camels like this, and they had their guns. And so they threw some powder down this funnel muzzle, threw a ball, packed it in, raised it up. Boy! Bounced along. When the funnel came to Europe, they decided that this was just the thing for a short range gun to use in naval engagement. Because you shot at short range at multiple targets and you wanted to reload in a hurry sometimes. You'll notice this thing doesn't have a ramrod in it. In naval engagements, you did not reload. You were on ship. It was so tight, everybody else had a sword or an axe or something to stab you with. So, no, you didn't worry about reloading your gun. You shot whoever was in front of you, drew your sword and defended yourself, and hopefully nobody got you first. Well, that was about the blunderbuss. Now, how did these things actually shoot? Well, they are short-range guns, always were. They were used by carriagemen for the same reason. They could actually reload them while they were sitting up on the buggy seat, going bang, bang, bang. But they were never raised to the shoulder to be shot. They were shot like that, braced across the body, and they have a recoil bulb to help take the recoil. So you pointed this at your highwayman over there, and hopefully got him first before he got you. Bang! Desperate day. And these were guns for desperate times. They were actually mostly used in combat during the Irish Rebellion. The Irish, being somewhat enthused by American success at throwing off the British yoke, tried. So they had a rebellion. And they actually fought in Dublin and in the Wicklow Hills. This lasted for more than three years. The Irish were not particularly skilled in arms, so they relied, as, as civilians, with these intimidating-looking blunderbusses against British regulars who were commanded by none other than General Lord Cornwallis of American Revolutionary War fame. So these did bloody and desperate work in Ireland, and this was probably in the 1790s the maximum military use of the blunderbuss. For civilian use, for self defense, hunting? <laughs> we go see about that one too. Yeah, I I'm going to try to take a little game with this. Side. So we'll be back with you with a second, and I'll actually show you how it shoots. I loaded this tradition's blunderbuss with 70 grains of Hodgson's 777 powder and one ounce of shot. Basically a 20 gauge load. Now I and others shot it while we were out there. And here I am again, ready to let go. Well, that's what a blunderbuss looks like when it shoots. And here's what the pattern did. Uh, this is one ounce of shot at 10 yards, and that's a nice pattern. Now, I loaded some air rifle shot, and here you see this big cluster in the center of the target. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, Converting Deer to Dunner for Pennies Per Pound, and I have other books, too, like Crossbow Hunting, Practical Bow Fishing, and my newest, Extreme Muzzleloading. The Irish Rebellion actually lasted from 1791 to 1803. Now, this period is usually called the Irish Rebellion of 1798. For more information on my books, blogs, videos, and radio show, Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, go to my website, www.hoveysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. 
Goodbye and God bless.